welcome to Season 2, Episode 73 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing Andrew Lloyd Webber's new Broadway musical, Bad Cinderella, now running at the Imperial Theater at 249 West 45th Street in New York, with lyrics by David Zippel, with original story and book by Emerald Fennell, and book adaptation by Alexis Shear. It is directed by Lawrence Connor and choreographed by Joanne M. Hunter. Well, hmm, is Bad Cinderella as bad as everyone is making it out to be? Uh, not really. I mean, it's not a good musical, but it's not exactly horrible. Is it bad? Yeah, well, let's see. Musically, it's Andrew Lloyd Webber. It sounds like Andrew Lloyd Webber. You're going to be able to hear the similarities in some of his songs, particularly Cinderella's ballads to songs like I Don't Know How to Love Him from Jesus Christ Superstar and Wishing You Were Somehow Here Again from Phantom of the Opera. So musically, if you like Andrew Lloyd Webber's scores as a whole, you'll find the score for Bad Cinderella a comfortable fit for you. The book, though, is sloppy, which I'm including Zippel's lyrics as part of, as his tendency leans towards cliched metaphors that were a bit worn out ten years ago, and the repeated use of the term bad Cinderella becomes an annoyance as it is used at times that have zero bearing on Cinderella's character and feels only placed there for the sake of it being the name of the show. Granted, I'll acknowledge this may not have been the case since the name of the show didn't become Bad Cinderella until it came here to Broadway uh, before it was just Cinderella. I don't know if they decided to add the word bad into every time they wanted to reference Cinderella in a negative. Bad Cinderella feels like retreaded plot points from previous Cinderella-style stories that have come out in the past 15 to 25 years, whether it be the 2021 film of Cinderella with Billy Porter or The Princess Diaries. Maybe when the show was first being conceived and written, it may have felt like a new twist to the story, but because Broadway shows, musicals in particular, take so long to get on their feet, unless it is something truly original, it's easy for a show to get old before it's even been born especially with a property so frequently adapted as this one. The concept behind Bad Cinderella is that we have the town of Belleville, a community of vapid, pretentious people whose only care in the world is that whatever they do, they look good doing it. Cinderella, played by Lenady Hanau, is the black sheep of the community. Instead of wearing silky pastels, she wears darker shades of leather in a not-quite-neo-alt-rock or grunge punk style that fits the medieval semi-fantasy world they live in. Like the classic tale, she lives with her stepmother, played with Scene Stealing Resplendence by Carolee Carmelo, and her two prideful stepsisters, Adele, played by Sammy Gale, and Marie, played by Morgan Higgins. The story goes in a different direction, as Cinderella doesn't have any fantasies of life living in a castle. Prince Charming has been missing for a year and is presumed dead. Her only friend though, does happen to be Prince Charming's younger brother, Prince Sebastian, played by Jordan Dobson. I actually saw Dobson's understudy, Julio Ray, the afternoon I was in attendance, who was actually really good as the awkward younger prince. Whether it was intended or not, he had a pasty nervous quality that I thought was fitting for the character. He doesn't want to be thrust into the spotlight as the queen, played by another scene-stealing superstar, Grace McLean, wants him to immediately marry someone from Belleville so that they can have an heir. Sebastian is a bit odd as well, and he has a negative view of the people of Belleville and finds his only comfort hanging out in the woods with Cinderella, who... So this leads to the question, if the characters already like each other at the top of the show and both share a mutual disdain for the vainglorious citizens of Belleville, then why do we need a story? Well, that's one of the narrative issues, and it's a big one as the fabricated reasons as to why they can't be together are pretty weak, requiring Cinderella to believe that her stepmother, whom she already distrusts, telling her that Sebastian wouldn't love her unless she was like everybody else, when beforehand Sebastian literally tells Cinderella that he wants her to come to the ball just the way she is, it makes no sense. 
This all fabricates more drama as Cinderella goes to the godmother, played by Christina Acosta Robinson, who isn't magical in this version. Instead, the godmother is a plastic surgeon who gives makeovers and does so for Cinderella, giving her Botox injections, uh, a new do, and an admittedly impressive costume change. And that's the first act. The second act addresses the repercussions of Cinderella's attempt at changing herself for a man who already told her he doesn't even want her to change, starting with the fallout of the ball, which doesn't end in a way the classic fairy tale does. Now, I won't spoil how the musical plays out from the ball on, but I will say that the second act does address the show's themes much better and is the much stronger act. In spite of the contrivances that get us here, the show's resolution does bring an uplifting sense of satisfaction. On the other hand, there are two major sequences in the second act, a ball and a wedding, and by the time the wedding is done, uh, we need the show to end, and the story runs way too long after the wedding, bringing different resolutions. Granted, there isn't even much motivation for Cinderella to even want to go to the ball in any way, shape, or form, as either the direction of the character or the acting by Hanau doesn't offer much romantic interest on her part towards Sebastian. The first scene doesn't offer much in romantic tension, so we have trouble believing that they love each other in the first place. It could be due to Ray being the utter study on stage at the at the performance I was at, and the two may not have had their timing or their chemistry worked out yet. But I enjoyed Ray's performance, so I'm inclined to think it wasn't that, but something else. Really, I think Bad Cinderella was a missed opportunity. There is a lot of potential here. This could have been a great story paralleling our cultural obsession with beauty and vanity, setting the story of Cinderella on its head in the process. Instead, we get a muddled mess. That isn't to say that Bad Cinderella is a total loss. The cast is overall wonderful, as I mentioned before. I think that Gabriela Tilosova's scenic and costume design is gorgeous. The dresses in particular for the women are brilliantly detailed, and when hitting their spots under Bruno Poet's lighting, uh, they shine. I also love the environmental stage elements like the proscenium and the set pieces that give just enough of a fairy tale world that isn't quite our own. So as much as I appreciate and approve of the attempted message of finding beauty in yourself and not following the banal vapidness of cultural norms, I find that changes in relationships with the characters creates more problems than it solves. The cast is delightful and the design is superb. Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber's score is pretty much classic Andrew Lloyd Webber, and you know what you're getting in for there. Bad Cinderella, it's not the worst new musical of the year. There's at least one or two that come to mind that I can think of. And if you heard my other reviews this season, you'll know what one in particular I'm thinking of. Bad Cinderella, not as bad as all that, but it's still not good. But I'm only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you'd like to see Bad Cinderella, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get tickets. You can support my channel by becoming a patron on my Patreon page where I have exclusive content. You can also support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be Connecticut Repertory Theater's production of Death and the Maiden. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.